You know, I won't be able to convince you, but there's someone else that is able to convince you. There's that little tugging that takes place deep inside our hearts that as you're sitting there, you begin to get nervous and something is happening inside. You don't know what it is, but something is bugging you. My friend, it's the Holy Spirit. Victory Outreach Ministry is a ministry that first of all started in the heart of God. And then I remember when he put the calling upon my heart to reach the treasures out of darkness. When I received that calling, I felt very, very inadequate because I really felt that I was the very least of the least. But nevertheless, God placed that calling upon my heart. Everything from the very beginning was very, very humble, humble beginning in a humble neighborhood, and then also in a humble church building. I remember the first pulpit we had was a pulpit that was made out of a television set. And you could actually see uh, when you walk behind the pulpit, and especially preachers that would come to visit and to minister there at the church, when they look behind the pulpit, they were able to see the screen of the television set. And it was a humble, a humble, humble beginning. And then also even the, the building itself, uh, as far as the, the ground of the building, it was made out of wood. And many times there were holes in the wood and there were gaps in the wood that even when some of the people got excited and, you know, Victor Outreach, we got excited. And when they're singing the songs, people get excited. They want to dance and they want to jump. And sometimes I was, uh, I was afraid that somebody was going to go through that floor, that wooden floor, because that's how weak that floor was. But that was the beginning of the Victory Outreach ministry there with a humble, humble beginning in a humble neighborhood in East Los Angeles. I remember that at first the slogan was uh, East LA for Jesus. But then I uh, remember one day that I was invited to go and minister at this church where they were having a conference. And there was another speaker that was there by the name of Dick Mills. And after he had ministered, at the end of his message, he pointed to me and he says, I have a word for you, Sonny, from the Lord. And he gave me a promise. He gave me a scripture that was a promise to me and to the ministry of Victory Outreach. And the promise was this in, in Isaiah uh, 45, where it says in verse 2 and 3, I will go before you and make the crooked places straight, and I will break in pieces the gates of bronze, and I will cut the bars of iron, and I will give you the treasures of darkness and hidden riches of secret places, that you may know that I, the Lord who called you by your name, am the God of Israel. There was another scripture that was given to us by evangelist Dick Mills that also pertained to the second half of the Victory Outreach Ministry that is found in Isaiah 54, 2 and 3. It says, enlarge the place of your tent and let them stretch out the curtains of your dwellings. Do not spare, lengthen your cords and strengthen your stakes. For you shall expand to the right and to the left and your descendants will inherit the nations and make the desolate cities inhabit it. And this is a scripture that I believe is for the latter part of Victor Archie. It's a scripture that's for the now. This is just a little taste that God has given to you. There's much more where this comes from. I said in our conferences, we're going to see, we're going to have different boots of different interpreters and different translators that are going to be in all those boots with different languages. There's going to be representations of people from all over the world, all nationality, all languages that are going to be coming to our conferences. There's going to be interpretation going forth. They're going to be getting hold of the vision. And God has given us every city in the world that's populated, that's infested with drug addiction and crime where people don't know what to do. God is saying, I have raised up a ministry of people that were no people, and I'm going to send them to the four corners of the world. From the building on Glass Street, we were able to move into another building on St. Louis Street, which was right still in East L.A., and that gave us a little more room for expansion, and God was moving, more people were coming in and, and getting saved, 
And that's where on the building on St. Louis Street, it was where many received the call of God upon their lives. I believe that in, on Glass Street, it was a growing time. It was a time of building, a time of maturing, a time where they were getting close to God. But then, and also a time where the vision was being cast, and it was a time of vision casting. And then on St. Louis Street is when all of a sudden that vision was put into action. And that's where God began to separate men and women for the work of the ministry. And in St. Louis Street is where they received the call of God, and we began to launch out people out there into different cities. One of the well-recognized pastors reached on St. Louis Street was elder and pastor Steve Pineda. And I have with me Steve Pineda, who is the coordinator of this whole march. Steve, could you share a little bit about what's happening? Well, Sonny, we decided to form a, a march, something like this, is a, something positive. Oftentimes when people think of Whittier Boulevard, they think of the negative, the lowrider, the cruiser, and, and gang violence. But we decided to form this in order to have something positive. Also in St. Louis Street is where we hit a, a crossroad within our ministry where the government and also the city officials began to see the great work that was being done with drug addicts and gang members in East Los Angeles. And they offered us funds, federal funds. And uh, I remember that I was kind of hesitant in the beginning and they said, well, we'll just go ahead and we'll try it out. And we tried it out for a year. We received funding for one year. And then the second year, they wanted to go ahead and, and double the funding. But at that time is when God began to show me that this ministry was not going to depend on government funds, but it was going to be a ministry of faith. And that we were going to trust God and God's people were going to tithe and even give them above their tithes. And that God's people were the ones that were going to support the work of the ministry. So we went ahead and refused the funding that they wanted to give us. And that's when the newspaper people came and they put us right in the front page. Uh, here is uh, when everybody's fighting for a piece of the pie, uh, Victory Outreach has denied, has rejected, or uh, does, doesn't want to be funded. And man, I mean, that made an impact where uh, we even received different donations from different people, different politicians that send donations to our ministry and says, we are really uh, uh, proud the way you've taken a stand with your convictions. And, uh, and from that point on is where we've learned to put our trust and confidence in God to meet all of our needs, not only our spiritual needs, but also our financial needs as well. And, uh, and that was where God began to even expand the ministry even more. While we were at St. Louis Street in our new location, that's where all of a sudden God began to separate men and women for the work of the ministry and we started launching them out. And while they were out there, is when we saw the need that we needed to bring them back together again. And that's when we had our very first conference and we had it in, in a church of the open door right on uh, Olympic in East LA. It was a Spanish uh, speaking church that they let us use and we had a, a whole week of conference there and again that was our that was the beginning and uh, our very first conference. We also uh, went on to another building and it's a building was a little bit larger and that was the uh, Latin American Bible Institute. And then from there, every time we had a conference, that we, the buildings got bigger and, and bigger and bigger. We went on also when we moved to the International Club. And there in the International Club, we also had our conferences there. And every place that we went, the ministry continued to grow. I remember in the International Club, that's when we also uh, got on television. We went on, uh, on Channel 40 and on Trinity Broadcasting Network. And we started airing nationwide the very popular program called Treasures Out of Darkness. to welcome you once again to the program Treasures Out of Darkness. And today on the program I, has, I have as our guest 
David Martinez, who is pastor of the Victory Outreach San Fernando. David, I would like to welcome you to the program today. Thank you, Sonny. It's a privilege to be here with you. How many years were you involved in drugs? I was just involved in drugs a few years. In 1972, I came back from Vietnam hooked on heroin. So I did that for a few years, and then uh, I started hearing about the gospel. And that, we received a number of awards for that program. And just by people seeing the program, more people began to come in. It also helped a lot of the different churches that we had in different cities around the country. They also began to grow by also people tuning into the program. And God began to give us even more growth. Before that, we had been in on Glass Street. That's where we first started out. Then from Glass Street, we went on into uh, on St. Louis Street. And then from St. Louis Street, I remember that we went also, even before we went to the International Club, we went into an auditorium there in Montebello High School Auditorium. We were there for two years. And then from that auditorium, then we went on into uh, the International Club. And that's where we, at the International Club, we had a number of conferences. We couldn't have it at the at the Montebello High School because we couldn't have it for the whole week. But at the International Club, we were able to have, have it for the whole week and we continue on having our conferences. And then finally, we went out there by faith and there was uh, 15 acres of land that we were able to purchase right in La Puente. And uh, it, that place was so devastated. I mean, it was all burnt. And, uh, and when I first went, I. It was very hard for me to see through the eyes of faith. My wife even had more faith than me at that time. She was able to see what was going to happen. And uh, I had a hard time really seeing and envisioning it. But uh, we went ahead and by faith we took that step. And that's where God took us again into another level that we were able to eventually build uh, an auditorium there that could seat 3,500 people. And there we would packed that out. We packed it out. We would not only have 3,500, we even had as many as 4,000 people that we had there at the, at, in the auditorium in La Puente. And that's where it also became the, the Mama Church. On the campus of La Puente, California, Victory Outreach began hosting their conferences under the tent where thousands began to fill to capacity. Then to the Pomona Fairground. From there on, they hosted the conference in San Bernardino, California, at the Orange Show Fairgrounds. From San Bernardino, Victory Outreach moved to the Long Beach Convention Center, then off to the San Diego Convention Center, then back to Long Beach Convention Center, where they would be at for the next three world conferences. By faith, Joshua claimed his inheritance and conquered the land promised to him. By faith, God called an inner city people who were no people and promised them the treasures out of darkness. <laughs> by faith, by faith, Ed Morales and his young wife, Mitzi, were called of God to go to San Jose, California. They obediently went, believed God for the impossible. By faith, Stephen Josie went to Hayward and conquered the city. By faith, Steve launched out to the Philippines, not knowing anyone, with two phone numbers in his pocket, and miraculously a church was built. By faith, Chucky from Hayward and, and Barry from Santa Rosa went to spy out Indonesia within a year and had a hundred Muslims declaring Christ as Savior. By faith, Jerry and family believed that Israel miraculously, the Lord opened up the doors and Jews from all over the world were coming to Christ. By faith, David Martinez in his 60s went to Australia, New Zealand, plant three churches and now is looking to plant more in Samoa and from other places as well. By faith, Sonny Jr. took over the La Puente Church. By faith, Alan Georgina went to drug infested East Coast and opened up the first UTC. By faith, brother and sister Masterson are taking Ontario, California in their golden years. By faith, a 
team of workers are going into Guatemala even after the death uh, in a gun down shooting of two of the previous workers. By faith this Saturday, men and women are going to be launched out to take the nations of the world. By faith, by faith, by faith, by faith, by faith. Everybody stand. I remember that every step that we took and as we moved in from one auditorium to another auditorium and every every step that we took God challenged us to take us into another level and uh, I remember that at the Long Beach Convention Center that's where the Lord began to uh, move upon us to begin to raise the standard within our ministry and I, I believe that that was a very very important conference there where the Lord spoke to us about that because God wanted to take us to an another level yet. He wanted to expand us even more and he wanted to solidify this ministry. So he, we were challenged at that conference to go to another, stand another standard, to raise the standard of our ministry. And that's where we came in with the, the school of ministry and we started emphasizing on that. We started also uh, uh, strengthening, also uh, strengthening the stakes. In other words, strengthening all of our ministries and looking how we could strengthen the, the pastors and the ministers that were out there. And there's a number of things that we did that we initiated there at that, that conference that I believe uh, also opened it up for us so that we could experience even more growth within our ministry. Victory Outreach also has had conferences in different countries on the off years of the International World Conferences. The Victory Outreach European Conference. Mexico has grown tremendously and has conferences with thousands of people in attendance. This past year, Victory Outreach also held their first South American conference in Caracas, Venezuela. People came from all over Central America and the Caribbean islands. This year, for the very first time, Victory Outreach held their first African conference in Liberia, Africa, where all the Victory Outreach churches came to worship Jesus Christ. Victory Outreach has also partnered with Nikki Cruz Ministries on many occasions. Victory Outreach has been able to see great crusades in different countries of the world. Caracas, Venezuela, Curacao, Mexico City, El Salvador, Australia, New Zealand, and Africa. Core Ministries has been raised up in Victory Outreach International, the Victory Outreach Christian Recovery Home, United Women in Ministry, Mighty Men of Valor, the Victory Outreach Youth Gang. I wasn't born in smoke. I was born in Glass Street. Then we went to St. Louis Street. Then we went to the Montebello. Then we went to there in, in International. Then we came here and we're still growing and we're still expanding and we're still taking off and we're still reaching the world and we're still reaching the drug addict and we're still reaching the lost and we're still reaching the hurting. We don't stop! God has given to this ministry foundational principles and he's given us principles and he's given us value. Not only has he given us a vision, and we have clarity of vision that we're to reach out to the inner cities of the world. But he also has given us principles and values that we should live by. And as far as the values are concerned, one of the most beautiful values that we have is that Victory Outreach is not just an organization, but Victory Outreach is a family. And it's a worldwide family that God has given to us in Victory Outreach. This is why there's a, there's a relationship that we have within our ministry. And not all ministries have that. And I thank God that we could have that relationship and we could have that value that we are a family. And, and I hope I don't, uh, as, even if we get big and, and continue to grow and, and, and continue to be enlarged, that we will always be able to keep that value that we are a family. There are other values that God has given to us as well that I believe make up the foundation of our ministry. These are things that are not negotiable. These are things that we must continue to keep if we want to continue to see the effectiveness within our ministry and the blessing of God leading us in our ministry. And it's so great that tonight we are back again where it all started in L.A., and we're right here at the L.A. Convention Center. And uh, 
and it's beautiful to see everyone has come from all different parts of the world that are gathered here tonight at this conference. I believe it's a very, very important conference where we're celebrating 40 years of ministry, and we have over 500 ministries around the world in over 30 countries around the world. God has taken us a, a mighty, mighty long way. You brought us from a humble beginning and transformed us into a worldwide ministry. Now here we are standing in this place. of people that were no people and I want to send them to the four corners of the world. <laughs> 